What is up people, DevSage here, and I'm going to be telling you about async and await in JavaScript. So what are async and await? So they are two nifty little keywords in JavaScript that allow us to write cleaner asynchronous code. So as you may know, there are various approaches to writing asynchronous code, like using callbacks or promises. Um, async await is just another addition to that list. They actually go hand in hand with promises and you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit later. Um, so if you don't already know about JavaScript promises already, you might have a little bit harder time following along. So I recommend you go watch the video I have about promises. Um, I'll probably leave like a link in the description or something. So go and watch that video, then come back and you'll be able to follow along a little bit better. So I guess I'll just go ahead and jump into the code now. So setting up a scenario, let's say um, I want to make a sandwich, but I don't have any bread. So I need to go to the store and buy some bread then I can make my sandwich. So we're just going to have a function by bread. And we're just going to return uh, bought bread. I also want to have a function make sandwich. And of course, we're just going to return made sandwich. And we're going to have a third function just to kind of manage everything. It doesn't really matter what the name of this one is. So we're just going to call it uh, init. And um, yeah, so inside of here, I'm actually going to create some variables. Const uh, bought bread is equal to the value of the uh, whatever the buy bread function returns. So it's going to return bought bread and that's going to get stored in the bought bread variable. And likewise, I'll just have um, made sandwich equals to the result of the make sandwich function, which is made sandwich. And we're going to print out the results or just print out those variables bought bread and made sandwich. So this is going to behave exactly how you expect it to behave. So it's going to print out bought bread and made sandwich. Let's run it. Oh, we actually hadn't called init. So we do need to call init down here. So now we can run it. Bought bread, made sandwich. Excellent, right? Um so let let's say I'm at the store and the line is super long. So it's I can't actually buy the bread immediately. I, I there's going to be some time that's going to have to pass before I can get the bread. So let's say we go up to our bread buy bread function and have a set timeout. And we're actually going to wait uh, five seconds before we actually return uh, are able to get the bread. Um, so, yeah. Five second wait before we can actually buy the bread. We still need to make our sandwich, but we need to do that after we buy the bread. So if I run this again, as you can see, we have undefined made sandwich. Well, if you don't know why that is, so what's what's happening is um, you jump in the top of init here. You go to bought bread is equal to the value of the function by bread. So it's going to go up here. It's going to JavaScript is going to see, huh? This is a set timeout. Well, I don't really want to wait uh, until this set timeout is finished before I want to run the next line. So I'll, I'm going to start this. Then I'm just going to jump to the next available line. In this case, this is here. And then I'll come back whenever you're ready. So what's going on is it's starting the buy bread function, then going immediately to the made sandwich um, function or make sandwich function, 
printing out the value of bought bread which actually hasn't been assigned yet it's still waiting in this set timeout so that's why it's printing undefined by now of course this value is actually set so if I wanted to print it now I mean yeah but of course it doesn't work like that so um, now in the last video in my JavaScript promises video we we saw exactly how we can overcome this so we can just go up into buy bread and we can just return new promise resolve reject and just take all this just wrap it around in the promise and instead of returning we're just gonna resolve actually all right so now we're gonna kind of see where async comes in so what we're going to do is to this init function we're going to tack on this async keyword in front of um, the, the, the function keyword here this tells JavaScript hey we're allowed to use the await keyword inside this function only functions that have the async keyword on them um, are eligible for um, the await keyword so you, you can't just decide to use await outside in the global scope or inside of a function that is not a defined to be asynchronous um, so what the await keyword does is it says I want you to assign the value of buy bread to this variable bought bread now, I don't want you to run any other line until this is finished so when init is, init is called it's going to run this line and it's going to say oh we're not going to we're actually not going to jump into the next available line we're going to wait until you uh, return a value then we're going to go on to the next line so what's going to happen here is it's going to call buy bread it's going to wait five seconds print out bought bread and then it's going to move on to make sandwich and we're going to see that here let's run it one two three four five bought bread and made the sandwich it started to buy the bread and it said wait here before we jump to the next available line so that's how you use the async and await keywords so uh, a little note the keyword await can only be used in front of functions that return promises so that's why we have um, you know this buy bread function returns a promise that's why we are allowed to use the await keyword in front of it it's this if I decided to try to use the await keyword in front of make sandwich it, this is going to throw an error because make sandwich actually doesn't return a promise if I wanted to let's say um, actually will it will it throw an error Let's see what it will do I think it actually okay yeah I think it actually if a promise isn't being returned it decides to just wrap this value inside of a promise so you can use the await keyword with functions that don't return promises but it doesn't really make sense I mean you won't I mean ideally you would use the await keyword in front of functions that return promises in order to kind of control your program flow to make sure that values that are necessary for um, you know any uh, execution or any function below it um, they, they get returned first so that is a little bit about you know JavaScript await and async um, if you have any questions comments uh, leave them down in the description if you got any more tutorial requests, I'll be glad to hear them. Just leave them down in the description. And yeah, peace.